Hey guys, it's Angie and Andrew. Um, welcome back to another episode, I guess you could say, of what we are eating this fall. And to this week, we're going to start off with croutons because I know there's a couple soups um, on our menu, if you want to call it that. Um, one, we're going to use a harvest soup mix. And this is one we get at our bulk Amish store. And Andrew had asked... Um, about doing some beef and barley soup, which we haven't made in a while. Um, the harvest soup is going to go into, um, the soup mix is going into a mix with the butternut squash, which Andrew will show you later how to take care of. My parents graciously, graciously gave us two huge butternut squash. So we're going to eat croutons, and we're going to start that with this big, giant loaf of um, just Italian bread. A sink right now. And I'm going to start this. Just taking a bread knife through it. And... A big sheet pan. You want um, a large area so that your um, croutons can get toasted on all the sides. And I'm not going to worry about having extras of these because um, the guys Andrews works with had a field day just eating these on their own like a snack. So if there's any left over from us, I'm sure they won't complain to get some. All you want for this is just bite-sized cubes. Just make sure they're all kind of about the same just so that they um, toast up even. I do have the oven preheating right now at 350. Just on regular oven, not convection. Some of these are a little chunky. I, I'll probably go back and cut them down. But. Like these guys are, and there are ovens ready. Like these are really big. Just got a bite. They're smart, they stay under our feet. Mm -hmm. Alright, so there's that half. And I brush these crumbs on there too. They they toast up nice. This is also a good way to make your own bread crumbs, is to do this and then run them through a food processor and have fresh bread crumbs or dried bread crumbs. narrow this way I won't have to cut them in half again then. Now for the messy part. A um, couple different, I guess this is the open one. We'll put that back in the cupboard then. So we need some oil. 
I just put my fingers over the top, flip it, and just start to drizzle. You don't want your bread sopping with oil, but you need enough on there that it'll toast nice. get messy again here anyhow. Okay. I have Italian seasoning, garlic powder, onion powder, and salt and pepper. So we're going to give this a good sprinkling. And at this point, you can add any flavors you like. You could just go as simple as salt and pepper. Um, this is entirely everything to taste. If you wanted to put something like... Uh, Parmesan cheese on it. Mm -hmm. when, would, when would you do that? Um, now, just grate some over top of it. And if you want it on, go ahead and grab it. Do that before we mix it. Whoa! Holy onion powder. I typically put this in my hand, but. I was too lazy to wash my other hand, so it'll get mixed around. It'll be all right. These are the little, um, like I've seen Dollar Tree has them out now, the little jar ornaments that they keep out at Christmas time. That's what these are. We went and bought a crap pile of them because I don't know how many um, last Christmas. And then just used our little labeler um, to mark what our spices are because this is how we buy our spices um, in bulk. And when you store them like this, you can't see what it is and obviously doesn't work to stand around container up. So this little trick works very well. And they're plastic, so if boxes like me drop them, they're not going to break. Did you find it? I am still looking for it. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and mix this, and this is real difficult. You just take your fingers in there and start rolling it around in the oil that's on the pan and get it all mixed. Kind of squish it a little bit. Got it. And I, Andrew's going to put some cheese on here for us. We're going to have some cheesy breadcrumbs. Sorry about all the rustling. I was trying to root through the refrigerator drawer to find it. We just got groceries and getting ready to meal prep for this week, so the refrigerator's still a little bit of a disaster area. Yeah. Some things before they get, some things before they get tidied up could be summarized as there appears to have been a struggle. Yeah, Fridays and Saturdays, the poor refrigerator looks atrocious and then by Sunday afternoon it everything's all nice and neat and tidy and in their little glass containers and good to go for the week. Alright I'm gonna go wash up while we grate some cheese. Alright. Okay we kind of got spoiled over the years we prefer our fresh grated off of a wheel of cheese. And you can pick it up anywhere. Any, most of your grocery stores have that specialty cheese case. Just any of it. And a nice little microplane. We use that because we can get nice fine little grates of it on there. And you just, whatever you think looks good. I was only thinking about this because I was tasting the Olive Garden style. 
breadcrumbs, and I know Parmesan is one that a lot of people like to put on theirs. So, get some down here in this little corner so that these guys don't feel left out. And I think we're going to call that good. We say it don't take much. And it's ready to pop in the oven at 350. Um, probably, uh, or no, turn it down to 325. I think I did the last ones at 325. Okay. And we'll let that in there about 25 minutes. And then I just turn the oven off and let it sit there until I get around to taking it out. So we will catch you guys back when we pull these yummies, yumminess out of the oven. Okay guys, time, okay guys, timer has gone off. Let's get ready to check these and see where we're at. Oh, shh. All right, look, look really, really good. Eggs. How do they sound? Nice and dry. Sound like croutons to me. All right, so the we're going to go ahead and turn the oven off, and we're going to pop these back in and just let them cool in there and let the oven cool down with them. That'll just help dry things out even a little bit more. They're not going to burn at this point since the oven's off. And these beauties are what we're going to work. Well, Andrew's going to work with. Um, oh, Stars Mercy, we doing both of them? I'm trying to get it set up there. Yeah, those are out of my parents' garden. So, yep, we're gonna peel those up, and chop them up. All right. I'm gonna try a couple of different. Got a couple of different peelers here, a Y peeler and just a straight peeler. Um, see if we can get the see if we can get the skin off of those, and then you take the guts out of them and the seeds and um, chop them up. All right. And we'll once we take the breadcrumbs off of that sheet pan um, that's what we're going to use to put the squash on then um, <clears throat> are you not going to peel it first well, we'll peel it in pieces like that oh okay i don't know if our peelers are sharp enough to do that mm, i think it is but it Go in smaller pieces. Yeah, it's just going to be very careful. This being a thicker skin. <clears throat> We're also going to pop a couple russet potatoes in on that sheet as well um, because part of this squash um, is going to be turned into soup and another part of it's going to be turned into pasta. Some of that green lines off of it. Shh. This is not a fast process. All right, well, go ahead and just whack that one in half. We'll gut it <clears throat> and right, get these out of the way. <clears throat> then we can pause the camera while you chop and okay. You got a spoon to get them out with? Not yet. Okay. Yep. Scoop the goodies. Now, if you've never done this before, it's very simple. You just take your spoon around the edge there. I don't know if you can see what he's doing. Just kind of scoop it out. And you can keep these seeds. Um, let them dry out, lay them out flat, let them dry out, and you can replant them um, in the spring to get your own butternut squash, or they roast up very well just like pumpkin seeds or pepitas as you might know them.
they taste similar. Okay, there we go. There's one. And like she said, we'll just kind of come in and get that top there. Then you just kind of scoop it around there. Natural shape of that spoon will do most of the work for you. Yep, and scoop we go. Scrape some of that membrane out of the middle. I still gotta clean the stove anyway, so. A little bit of mess ain't gonna bother me. All right, and there they are. All right, so now we'll just chop these up into like one inch chunks. And, and they'll get here. put on a bar pan and roasted. Um, we'll put them back in the oven at probably 350-ish for roughly a half an hour, um, 30 minutes. It, it's something that you, you, one of those things you just want to keep an eye on. Because um, it depends on how big your squash pieces are and how big you've cut them. Um as to how long it's going to take but when you can put a fork into it and we'll show you when we come back um, when we're ready to pull them out of the oven um, you just want to be able to put a fork in it and make sure it's fork tender and then they'll be ready to do whatever you want to do with you could eat them straight out of there um, you can puree them which we're going to do for a soup um, we're going to mash some of them to make pasta there's quite a variety of things that you can do with right. with these um, if you want to eat them right away um, you could like we drizzled the olive oil on the croutons you could um, drizzle olive oil and salt and pepper um, even cinnamon and nutmeg is good on, on butter butternut squash kind of like you would dress a sweet potato um, and roast them that way as well okay so you see what we're doing here and that's what we're just gonna Andrew's just gonna continue to do get these prepped um, and in the oven at 350 for about half an hour and then we will show you what fork tender looks like when they come out okay guys thanks hold on okay guys thought we were gonna roast this and then come back but we're back um, because I forgot there's other things that need to be roasted and we're gonna have the oven on we're gonna do it all at one time so you can see the cubes that Andrew has there um, and they, these are going to go on the sheet pan and all we did was dump the breadcrumb off and we're going to add the cubes to the sheet pan. Boy, we may need a second pan. We're going to need a second pan because mm -hmm. you don't want them on top of each other. To, you don't want them to steam. You want them to roast. Now, if they're too close together like that, they're going to steam and not roast. So, pull out a, another bar pan. Look at we got a smaller one here. Well, you know what? Go ahead and put the extra on this, and we can put the garlic and potatoes on the small one. Okay, change of plans. Okay. We cook on the fly like we craft on the fly. Yes, we kind of have a game plan going into it. As to what we're going to be making for the week but when it comes down to it it's like you just gotta roll with the punches so and at this point if you're going to eat the squash um, as is um, on its own like I said you can go ahead and coat it with olive oil and salt and pepper at this point but because these are going to be getting turned into other um, items products um, we're just going to do ours bare naked, for lack of a better word. So there. Yeah, you there. just want them evenly kind of spaced and yeah, so they can good. roast. There. Now they're going to go in the oven at 350, just regular 350. We do not have the convection on. Um, for about, we'll check them in about a half an hour and then about every five minutes thereafter till they're fork tender. And then we will show you. Um, what fork tender means if you're not familiar with that. Now luckily we're fortunate enough to have a dual oven here. So, and yes we have both of them going at the same time. Yeah. That was one of my specifications when we got a new oven that um, I wanted a, the dual oven for this purpose because we usually have something sweet going. Alright, so there's your... Alright, that's the foil for that. Now, do we have a fork? No, nah, just use your knife. That's a little hole in them. There. 
So we're going to roast some potatoes, bake some potatoes. Um, and you just want to put a slice in them if you've never done potatoes before. Because if not, they can explode and you need to have something to let that steam out. Alright. So those are ready to go. That's all we got to do with them. Alright, so nothing else is going on that yeah, pan. Yeah, this. The ah, garlic. The, garlic. Okay. the garlic's going to go on the pan we're with that because yep. they're going to take about the same amount of time. Um, we're going to roast the garlic. Alright, I'm going to rinse the, my knife off real quick here. With the potatoes. <clears throat> Doesn't really matter for flavor-wise since it's all going to be going together, but a clean knife works better than a dirty one. And if you notice, the garbage bag isn't there for the, the, the leftovers, or not leftovers, scraps. That's sitting off to the side for us to add more to here as we go along, because that goes out to feed the chickens that give us the lovely eggs that we get to mm, eat. Gotta love fresh chickens. No, right. I'm sorry, my hands are going to be in the way here for this. So. These are just whole garlic cloves, and all you're going to do is just slice right down through the middle of that. That's all you're going to do right there. And if you think you don't like garlic... We're going to use this head instead. That is starting to come apart. Try it roasted. It gets so sweet. Oh, my goodness. You want to try to split them as close to in half as you can get. Now I'm a little off. More ways than one. Right, so we actually got the olive oil in the bottle now. All right. Put your shiny side out. It's the same. Oh, no. It is shiny. Oh, I got you. Never mind. We're just going to drizzle that with some olive oil. Check your brain here. Oh! New bottle. All right, so we're going to, I'm going to smear them two together for a second I think here you could probably smear the other ones off of those ones. Oh, probably. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to have a little food fun here. A little smear. Oh, yeah. On there. Yes, I know what she just said to me. Heck, oh yeah, that'll work. Alright, now since he's all goopy, um, turn this around here. There we go. Get our hot pad out of the way here. We just want to add. You don't have to add the pepper. We like the pepper. And some salt. There. Now we just need to put them all cozy in their little nest here. You know what? I'm going to sit these back on top of each other. That sounds good. And just wrap them up, tuck them in, and off they go in the oven. That'll get. Potatoes, it's hard to tell. Um, I would start potatoes probably at about 40, 45 minutes and then check them about every five minutes after that to see, again, if they are fork tender. So there's what our little tray looks like and it's going to get tucked in the oven. And we will check here in about 40, 45 minutes and see where things are at. That sounds about right. So we will catch you guys back then. Okay, guys, we are back, and as you can see, the squash has already been pulled out. Um, we have our taters and garlic coming out here. So, if you're not familiar with, oops, if you're not familiar with what fork tender means, you just have your fork, and you should be able to insert it without any resistance at all. Like so. Okay, that's all fork tender means. So, uh, check on our garlic here, which should most definitely be done. <clears throat> so we just open up its little pouch. Oh, look at that. Mm. This is where I wish y'all had could smell through the camera. Let's see if I can bring it down here. Like the the GBD, golden brown and delicious. Mm, delicious is an understatement with this. Yeah, see, it's just like it just mushes. It's like 
garlic butter at oh, this absolutely. point. Oh, absolutely. Yum. All right, so we will um, be back to show you what we're going to do with that and how we're going to turn that pan of deliciousness into soup and pasta. Hey, guys. We will see you here in a minute. Okay, guys, we are back. We thought the camera was on, but apparently it wasn't. Um, at this point, all we've done, um, Andrew has done, is pureed the um, some of the butternut squash that was roasted. Um, and with he did that with some vegetable broth just to get it thin out enough to um, run through the blender. And he's going to add the rest of that broth into it. There wasn't much left. And... We're going to continue to loosen that up because this is going to be our soup. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just going to stir in that extra broth here a little bit. Yeah, look, I need that looser than that. Yeah. See what it looks like. All right, with that, I'm going to add um, a small amount of our lentils from our harvest soup mix. Stir that and see what it looks like. I'm trying not to make a whole terrible lot because it is just him and I. And this is where it gets a little iffy whenever you, you know you can read recipes and whatnot and thank heavens cooking is just kind of an art and you just learn to eyeball things you learn to wing it all right so we start with a little bit of those and we're going to add some of the roasted garlic in there that we did last night well it is the next morning because we had to let everything cool but All right. Squeeze a little bit of it in there. there we go. Squeeze a couple pieces in there. One. Two, that's about one clove worth. There we go. That looks two. Good. And he's also has some onions chopped up here. And add a little bit of that in. And I think he got some rosemary off the garden. Um. Okay, apparently not. Okay. <laughs> All right, he's going to go get some rosemary. In the meantime, tilt you down here. We're going to get this on. And while this is cooking, we're going to be browning some ground beef, which is going to be another meal. And then some sweet Italian sausage is going to get browned. Don't forget and, about me. Um, that will be going, the Italian sausage will be going into the pot here then when it's done. All and, that or half of it or what? Yeah, throw the whole thing in. Okay. All right, so now we need some salt and pepper. Move this garlic out of the way. Oh, that rosemary smells so good. Mm hmm As I like to refer to it, Edith the herb, the rosemary. We could not get rosemary to grow for the longest time. Now we have a pot that's almost so big that Andrew can't move it back and forth. No, we're going to have to put that baby on wheels. I'm going to add some thyme into here too. Let's see if our thyme leaves. Just basically any um, spices, herbs that you like, you can add into soup and make it your own. Alright, so we got the basics. We've got onion, we've got garlic, we've got herbs, we've got our squash, we've got our lentils. Um, I, th I think we might want to thin that out just a little bit more so the 
when the lentils absorb that it doesn't get dry just go ahead and dump it I'm gonna say I got a half a box there yet yeah. the lentils are gonna absorb that all right that looks good so now we're gonna plug that in should be already plugged in, just needs okay. turned on. All right, go ahead and lock the. I'll wait for it to sing to us. Put it into the locking position, make sure we are sealed, and we are going to turn on pressure cook. Custom. Oh no, we don't want. You don't need an hour. No. Lentils are to cook about 15 minutes on high pressure, so. There's our 15 minutes. I guess you can't see that, can you? So for this Instant Pot um, Duo Evo, I think is what it's called, yep. you turn this knob right here to what you want to pressure cook at. You just push your pressure cook. I just use the custom, and we're going to turn this down to 15 minutes. And then we just push start and that's it now we can let that alone until it beeps then we'll let the pressure release off of it um, for a little bit in the meantime we are just going to brown the meat so when we come back you will see the meat browned and then we're going to start pulling things together okay guys we're going to start with since our sausage is now browned our Squash is in here cooking away. We're going to start with our next meal, which is going to be a kind of a tweak on a Philly cheese steak. That's the wrong onions. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this is supposed to get slivered onions. Now give me a small bowl here. Oh, well, it's fine. Let them in there. Yeah, they're working. Okay. It's a Philly. It's supposed to have onions in it. Just more than we intended. Oh well. More flavor. I'm gonna throw some salt on them so we get that water out of them. Not quite diaries of a picky eater, but she's made and just made strides with me in eating vegetables that I didn't normally eat and in a fashion that I normally didn't eat them. I used to not like half crunchy onions. Any way I would eat them is cooked in the meat and don't tell me they were in there. But like I said, she's making strides with me about that. He's going to put in some garlic and I'll be done. Come on. Use that for a bowl. And another one. Whoop, get back out of there. And two. I think we're going to shoot for one more. I gotta stir that. There we go. Now, this garlic press, I gotta try to scrape all that goodness off the bottom of that because that's just wasting if you don't. Alright, I'll clean that thing up a little bit. That looks a little better. Now, once you add garlic, you always want to be very vigilant about your cooking with it because you don't want burnt garlic. Burnt garlic is bad. Now just cut open our hamburger here. Should have had that open and ready to go, but I didn't. This is straight lean hamburger. 90 90%. There we go. In the bill. Mix that out. Okay. 
and with a little help from my excuse me just a little bit of help from my trusty pampered chef I don't even what the name of this thing is hamburger tool we are not sponsored by them or anyone I just really love this thing because once you put it in there and it helps to break things up and once you use this thing royally speeds up your cooking look at that not much to look at right now but it's getting there we'll just keep using that thing to break it down here a little bit get our onion and garlic stirred in so we will go ahead and speed this part up um, so you guys aren't hanging around like watching paint dry Bad is watching burger burn, um, but we will go ahead and do that. Our pressure just pressure cooker just came to pressure. everybody we're back here we well, had a fistful of peppers here time to add them in and get them nice and softening to go in our Philly cheese all right so our hamburgers about three quarters of the way brown just means your peppers might have a little bit of crunch to them but so you don't want them fully cooked right now anyway for what we're doing we're meal prepping so if you want any texture to them later when you reheat it you don't want to fully cook them now so yeah there we go in case anybody's curious this just happens to be pamper chef's new 12 inch cast iron skillet so if anybody's been on the fence about it this is only our second time using it, so we love it so far. No big old handle to get in the way. Nice two little handles on the side. Like I said earlier, we are not sponsored by them. We just, we just love the product. We know somebody that does. Yeah, we know a dealer. <laughs> Sorry. Bad joke. No, not that kind. Not that kind of dealer. Her sister is a Pamper Chef consultant. Plus, we have several other friends that do it on the side. They have parties pretty re regularly, so. All right, I think we're... I think that hamburger is pretty well cooked. So we're going to go ahead and kill the heat. Oh yeah, I smell hamburger. Yep, we're cooked. So she's digging a uh, container here for me. Okay, so at this point, this is where we will divide this up into a, a small casserole dish, um, just for him and I. Um, I don't know how many cups this is. It looks uh, like six cups. I'll say I threw the box out, so I don't know. Yeah, this is a six cup, so that's going to be ours to pop in the oven later for dinner. And when we do that, it's going to get topped with um, provolone cheese as well. So we get that. Did you add the Worcestershire sauce in? Not yet. Okay, so we're not quite done yet. He's going to add the Worcestershire sauce in because... We just got it's a new it. recipe here, so a little bit of learning curve. How new much? Recipe. How much? We've made Philly cheese steaks before. How much? Just put some in. I don't know. 
that looks good. And then has Andrew's dinner bowl um, that he can go ahead and package it up and take it to work and reheat it when he gets there. And then that's one meal done for the week. I'm going to stir that in good before I pull it off. All right, so at this point, so we're just going to divide things up, and then we're going to get things um, pulled together here to start making the butter not pasta. Butter not pasta. Not full. Be right back. Okay, guys, we're ready to start the butternut pasta. Um, for that, we have a combination of a little bit of the butternut we roasted and one of the potatoes that we roasted as well. Now, Andrew's going to run that through a ricer. This is an antique one. You just lift that out, put your stuff in there, and then use the plunger to push it through. And you could use any form of mashing that you have you that's available yeah, we'll, to you. We'll start there. Have it down into your bowl if you can. And it's gonna squish out like little spaghetti strings. There it goes. Add a little bit more. Load me up. Now obviously we're not making a gonna try to not make a ton of pasta because it's just the two of us but with it being fresh we can freeze some of it there it just takes a fair amount of hand strength to do it this way but it makes for a good consistency yes yes it does sorry about my arm I'm just loading up the plunger. Get that way. There you can see. Put that last little bit in there. All right. Oh. Oh, man yeah. overboard. There we got him. It didn't make a ton of it, but we don't need a ton of it. No. She's gonna scrape the bottom of it here. Okay. All right. Now to this that we have here, we're gonna add. Um, do you want to get a spoon up for the ricotta? Yep. Okay. I'm gonna use the microplane and just grate some fresh parmesan in here. So it looks good. And I'm going to add a little bit of ricotta cheese into it. Because why not? It's Italian, so. And the cheese um, is going to help bind the pasta together. Also, for a binder, I have an egg that I've already beaten up so that it's not going in there and have to worry about pulling the yolk and the whip together. Alrighty, we have some salt, pepper. Let's give that a little bit of a mix to start, and then we're going to start adding flour until we get a soft dough. And this is one of those things again that you just gotta eyeball until it looks like you can roll, like until it looks like Play-Doh, and you can roll it out into like the snakes we used to make back in grade school with clay and Play-Doh. And... So this is what we look like right now, kind of like mashed potatoes. And we're just gonna start adding flour. A little at a time. You want to give that flour time to absorb that liquid. And you, in a way, you don't want to over mix this or over knead it though either, because then it'll get tough. This flour, regular flour, will develop the gluten when the more you mess with it, 
and you don't want tough pasta. I don't want tough pasta anyway. Alright, so there we've already got it pulling together. Now it's time to get messy. my memory what are we after on the pressure cooker when it's time um, just about give it about 15 minutes to, to vent yeah okay. and then you can release the pressure on okay it. All right, I have a silicone mat here that I'm working on yes my hands are clean doorbells to go off here about any minute. Oh wait, they were going to the store first. My yeah. parents are stopping after church today to get all those goodies for the chickens. And the little doorbells will be going off. Not that y'all don't know what they sound like already, but you haven't heard them, thank heavens, when the, somebody comes to the door. Yeah, we got five doorbells in here. Tell anybody who's coming, just don't knock. Just yeah, don't in. knock, just come in. It's easier. We don't got to get the dogs involved. Ugh. Now that hand's sticky, so I'm going to switch to this one. Because once the fingers get sticky, then everything wants to stick to them. break this down into um, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep my yucky hands here can you get me a little knife please Just all that gunk up there in the corner this is real cooking folks this isn't Food Network nope split that in half split that in half yeah this is home cooking at its best or worse, depending on your point of view. <laughs> well, I don't think we quite rank up there as worst cooks in America. But nah. Just down home country. Rustic. Rustic home cooking. And this is all we're going to do with all four pieces. So I'll do one on camera here for you, and then we'll pause until we get everything rolled out and cut and then we will catch you back after that so basically you just want to keep sure everything is in the same size and then we're just gonna cut these into little gnocchi size pieces um, and if you want you can roll roll them down a fork to give the little line give me a fork Andrew I don't, I don't need that sheet paint so you can take your fork and give it the little lines that Neoki has. Um, I'm not going to sit here and do this with every piece because I'm not worried about it. It's just him and I. This isn't a restaurant. I'm not worried about the lines. So I'm going to keep rolling and cutting and then we're going to put these on a sheet pan just to start to dry out and we will catch you back. Okay guys, time to take the lid off of our soup and see where we are at. Looks like soup. Yep. Set the lid aside for now. And now we're going to dump in one the can of black beans that we he has rinsed and drained. Yep. Stir that all together. Use a wooden spoon. Who don't like a good wooden spoon? I don't know. I used to not like them growing up. Well, that's for a different reason. We won't go there. 
We're going to go ahead and pull out that rosemary stem since I already see the little rascal poking his head up. But no problem with the needles, I just don't like the stem. So, rest of it looks mighty, mighty tasty. Mm. Okay, and then we're going to pour in about half of our brown sausage. And then we're going to keep the other half for the pasta we just made. Yeah, a little bit more. There we go. We'll call that half. Stir it in. There we go. Boy, if that don't look like fall in a cup. Okay. I mean, without the cup yet. Do you want to give it a taste? Sure. I got the asbestos tongue here, so. Yeah, no me. As we said before, I seem to be the one to taste test because hot doesn't bother me. All right, here we go. Oh man. Oh, that is so good. Very, very earthy, but not, not funky. I like it. I really like that. So, one down. Oh, two down. Yep, that's two down. Two, two. down and the so pasta this, go, yeah. This is just going to cool down here a little bit and then we're going to come back to this for the barley soup. Um, right now we have, do we have water boiling yet? Not yet. All it's right. steaming. So as soon as water boils, we're going to drop our pasta, which is hanging out over here. One second while we watch the water boil. Yeah. Insert idle music here. There we go. One lovely little pan of homemade gnocchi. And as soon as the water boils, he's going to drop that in there. And then as soon as they float, they come out. Yep. So we will catch you back when the pasta's floated and back out of the pan. Okay, guys, as you can see, the pasta water is boiling. We've also um, started to melt some butter because the pasta is going to go straight from the water into the, the butter. We also have some of the diced up onions and the rest of that or head of roasted garlic. We're going to saute those down. And I was having total brain fart again, so that should have been started before the water started boiling, but this is real life. So we'll just let that, um, let the onions get translucent. And then again, the pasta is going to go into the boiling water. Now, do we do this piece by piece or do we do by the scoop pool? Uh, just watch you don't get too much flour in there. I don't, I don't want to flop it off. So, piece by piece it is. And you'll know when they're done when they float with it being fresh the way pasta. I'm not the camera. With fresh pasta, it only takes a few minutes to cook. So that'll give the onions time to get translucent. We'll probably have to do this in a couple of stages. That water's getting me. All right, so when they come out, a, they'll float, they're going to come out, they're going to go over into the butter, onion, and garlic mixture, and We're so that you're, heaven. so you're not sitting here watching things just do their thing for a while, um, we will catch you back when everything is going into the pan. Okay guys, so the gnocchi is all done, and it's going into the butter and onion. All right. it, and then the rest of our Italian sausage is going in. And that, my friends, is another dish done. So it's going to get transferred into our dinner dish and Andrew's dinner dish. And that's three down and the beef and barley soup to go.
So we will catch you back when we start that beef and barley soup. That stuff smells amazing, by the mm -hmm. way. Okay, guys, we are ready to start the last recipe for this week, and that's going to be the beef and barley soup. Now, Andrew already, since we already had the pan hot from the butter, he went ahead and pan seared um, the beef. And to do that, you just want to get a really screaming hot pan, lay your chunk of beef in it, and brown all four sides. And that's going to sear in those juices so that as it cooks, it stays nice and moist and tender. So over in the pot here, excuse all of our uh, dishes, obviously on meal prep day. <laughs> your kitchen turns into a disaster, but it makes life so much easier during yes. the week. All right, so for this one, we're going to... Just, we're going to dump everything in the pot. So, um, what's first? It doesn't matter. Okay. We have some carrots and celery, just a few stalks of each. I just chunk them up All like right. rough chunks. Just okay. The rest of our onions that have been diced. That's one thing we try to do ahead of time is chop all of our vegetables that we know we're going to need and then we can just grab and go as we need. Now we do have peppers left over, not a problem. They can go in the freezer. Okay. Alright, so now we have um, our herbs, which is going to be some thyme and rosemary. A couple sprigs of thyme. Just a little hunk of rosemary. Also have a packet of tomato paste. Alrighty, that's how you open this little crust. There we go. See the little notch? Squeeze it out. You could very well brown your meat in the, the Instant Pot as well and just keep it all in one pan, but we already had the cast iron yeah. already hot and it already had all that flavor in there, so why not use it? Okay, there we go. Okay. And like any soup for us, we're just eyeballing what works for us for portions because we don't want a terrible lot of leftovers. Gotta and get some of that good old seasoning in there. And he just added some steak seasoning to the beef. All right, now we have four cups of beef bone broth here. We may have to add more to it um, because of the barley and stuff going in, but we gotta make sure we don't go over our max line for liquid either. So if we have to add more liquid to it. Just to the top of the veggies. Okay, yeah, we're definitely going to need more. Alright, yeah, we're going to have room for the pearl barley to grow. Alright, so what do you want to use now? Do you have, have another beef broth? Negative. We have beef, turkey, and chicken. Alrighty then, we are going to improvise. With some beef base and water. Which so does I find the beef base? Top shelf. There's beef. Oh, sorry guys. Roast beef. Bouillon. We got ham. We got chicken. Um, there's beef bouillon over on the other side. Aha! Uh -huh, she sees it. I don't particularly care for the bouillon, but that's what we got. So. It is what it is at this point. All right, so we use this stuff here. Mix one packet for each pound of meat. So I think We're just one. Gonna put one in. But say, I think one will be plenty with this. We already have beef broth in it. All right. Now the pearl barley. You want to mush some garlic in there then? You get you mush the garlic and I'll. Uh, you want to grab me the musher right there? Now I open this, our pearl barley. Um, it'll go into a um, mason jar then to be stored in the cupboard. Because we obviously, for two of us, are not going to eat all that barley. No. Okay. Whoa! Barley overboard. On head. Peel the skin out. Two head. Or two bulbs, I should say.
and three. Just for good luck. Alright, so we'll grab a knife here. Scrape it down. Alright. Yep, that's it. Okay, and we need the lid. The lid turned around here, right? Listen to it sing. Make sure we our vent is vent uh, is on ceiling, and it is. And we are going to hit pressure cook, custom, and we're going to take this up to about 45 minutes. There we go, and start. Let it build up its pressure and do its thing, and we will catch you back when we're ready to take it out. Alrighty. Okay guys, so beef and barley soup is finally done. I'm getting ready to package this up. For oh yeah. Nice now, we, spoon tender. We did end up having to put this in for not another pressure cook it for another 15 minutes. So it was an hour total cook time on that chuck roast. Mm. And so now we'll Look at that. have spoon yeah. tender chuck roast. So we're going to go ahead and get this plated up for, do you want that or do you want the ladle? Yes. Get some broth in there. Because yeah, now he can take his croutons <laughs> that we made the other night to top it with. Them little rascals are criminal. So homemade beef and barley mm. with homemade croutons. Look at that. Sorry. Dog bump the camera. There she is. All right. So, watch out a second. Waltz over. Oh, we're sending up smoke signals here. Well, we're going to take you guys for a walk here. So, there we have everything all cooling down and ready to hit the fridge for the week. So, hope you guys enjoyed that and got some tips out of there to use um, for a meal or even some meal prepping ideas okay guys until next time which I'm um, not this will probably go out tomorrow um, so Thursday is week 14 of 24 weeks of Christmas I know that one's coming out I'm not sure what's coming out in between so until then take care guys and we will talk to you soon have a good week bye bye